Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you my entire collection of morph boas. I'm also going to touch on my future breeding plans for these morph animals and show you how you can make combo morphs by putting together different morph genes. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding these amazing animals in captivity. So if you want to learn all about boa constrictors, be sure to subscribe. Most of my boa constrictors are locality specific animals, but I have a nice small group of some really cool morph boas that I've been collecting over the last few years. And I'm not going to be producing any morph boa babies this year, but hopefully starting in 2022, I should have some morph babies. And um, this is actually my first morph boa. This guy is a call albino. This guy is now six years old, going on seven years old. And um, I got this guy back in 2015. You know, I call albino was arguably the first uh, morph boa that started the whole morph breeding craze back in the early 90s. And I remember seeing these animals for sale back then for somewhere around $10,000 a piece, which I thought was kind of crazy. So I decided, well, you know, why not pick one up? You know, just I, I wanted it basically as a pet. I wasn't really planning on breeding it, but I got this guy back uh, in 2015 for about $300. So the price certainly has come down a lot. And what distinguishes this guy is this is a 25% uh, red tail, Guiana red tail boa on a Roni pastel background. So the Ka albino is known to fade over time, but this guy I believe has retained his color a lot better than some of the other cow albinos. And so this guy hopefully will be siring some babies in some of my call albino projects in the next few years. This next morph boa is a female that I might breed to that call male. This is another call animal, but this animal is not just uh, has the call albino gene, but also has the jungle gene and the hypo or hypomelanistic gene. And as you can see, they really enhance the color. You can see how much more saturated the colors of this female are. You know, the deep oranges and yellows, especially on the head, lots of beautiful head coloration. So the hypo in the jungle just really bring out the coloration of the cow albino. This female is about two and a half years old now, and her colors have actually gotten better as she's gotten older. So I'm looking forward to seeing how she's gonna look in another couple of years when she'll be ready to breed. But just a really beautiful, clean looking animal. Look how clean the belly is. Just, you know, you really can't beat a jungle boa. Um, this animal is also of the lipstick line. So the lipstick line is a specific line of cow albino, which has been selectively bred for high color saturation, lots of deep reds, and they retain the color better. So really beautiful looking animal. Next, we have my most recent morph boa pickup. And this is another call animal, and it shows you how you can build on the call albino base gene and get a lot of really cool morphs. So this is a moon glow boa. It's a combination of the call albino plus the anorithristic plus the hypo or hypomelanistic. The call albino, more technically known as amelanistic, removes the melanin or the dark pigment. The anorithristic gene moves the anorithrin, which is the yellows and reds. And then the hypo thrown in there reduces the um, dark pigment further and also enhances the color contrast and the cleanliness. So overall, a really cool looking boa. So looking at this animal, you can see it has some faint markings. Uh, you can see the faint bow tie shaped saddles due to the hypogene. And you can see some tail saddles that are almost kind of a light lavender in color. It almost looks translucent. And then the animal has kind of a creamy yellowish white color. Uh, the moon glows don't really stay pure white. They kind of get a little bit yellowish or creamy looking with age, but definitely a cool, you know, beautiful looking boa that builds on the cow albino gene. And these animals, I had been looking for one of these for quite a while. It used to be, they seemed to be around the $700 range for a while, but they recently shot way up in price and now they're well over $1,000. And what I've noticed is a lot of the morph genes, you know, the morph boas that were going down in price now seem to be going back up again. Maybe not quite as much as locality boas, but the boa market has definitely been strong in the last few years. One more animal to show you in my call projects. And this animal is actually hat for call. It doesn't visually show the call albino, but it's carrying the call albino gene. This is a hypo IMG hat for call. 
and she's a little bit uh, feisty. Hopefully she's not going to strike at me. But um, this particular animal, you can see the IMG is the increasing melanin gene, which is a gene that causes the animals to get darker as they age. Hypo is the hypomelanistic gene, which causes the animals to be lighter in color. So it seems kind of a contradiction, but when you combine the two genes, you get this really cool look. It's a very high contrast animal with a lot of markings and they look kind of dirty overall, which is a look I really like. Check out the uh, belly scales on this animal. You can see the clean belly with lots of the dark melanin flecks. And this animal is a little over a year old and she's been getting darker with every shed. So uh, as adults, the IMG boas can sometimes be almost pure black, although with a combo with the hypo is usually not quite as dark as some of the other combos like the Annery or the Motley IMG. But a cool look. I got this animal to cross to my cow albino males because you can create IMG albinos and IMG sunglows. And when you throw in the IMG gene, it makes the albino a lot cleaner looking overall with much pure, more pure and highly saturated colors and just an overall really cool look. So IMG is a cool gene to work with. It's one of the hottest genes right now. And there are a lot of great combos that can be created with the IMG gene. I have one more IMG combo ball. This is a IMG hypo jungle. This is a female. Uh, she is about two years old. So basically the same visual genes as the animal we just saw, plus the jungle thrown in. So you can see this animal overall is lighter than the straight hypo IMG, but she's got a lot of that dark pigment. Check out her belly, really cool look. And I also love the head markings on this animal. Just a really cool look. Uh, so this particular animal as a bonus has a 66% chance, two out of three, of being hat for the VPIT positive albino. So I got this animal, you know, I plan on crossing it with my VPI albino male. And then if I'm lucky, it'll generate VPI uh, T positive IMG sunglows and albinos, which will be really cool to look at, as well as uh, the IMG T positive John Glows. I hope I got that right. A lot of genes to keep track of, but really, really cool look to the IMG projects. And I think IMG really enhances whatever uh, morph you breed it into. Um, yeah, so IMG, jungle, hypo, head albino, cool, cool animal. Since that female might be het for VPI, I thought the next boas we'd look at are my VPI animals. And the first one that I got is this straight VPI T positive male. This guy only has the one gene, no other genes. But you can see just how beautiful the VPI T positive is just by itself. So it's also known as the caramel albino. And the animals have this beautiful golden yellowish tan color. Uh, this animal also has a lot of beautiful reds and pinks in the side coloration. And what's great about VPIT positive is that the animals actually get better with age. They don't lose their color like the cow albinos. So what exactly is the T positive? Well, the T positive is tyrosinase positive, And that means that these animals don't have a complete disruption of the melanin gene. They produce a little bit of the dark pigment. So they have these beautiful uh, yellow colors. And I think VPI is one of the genes that looks good just as a single gene. You don't need to mix it with anything else to have a beautiful looking animal. Although you can certainly make some cool looking VPI combo morphs, which I'll show you in the next few snakes. But gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Uh, VPI was super expensive when it first came out, but these animals have come down a lot in price. And so if you're looking for a beautiful animal for a pet or start a breeding project, I can't recommend uh, more strongly that you look into the VPI T positives. My next boa is an example of some of the combos you can get when you combine the VPI T positive with other genes. This is a VPI T positive Junglo or VPI T positive Jungle Sun Glow. And it's actually the, similar to the Call Junglo I showed you earlier, except it has the VPI T positive gene instead of the Call Albino gene. So basically it's got the VPI, it's got the Hypo, and it also has the Jungle gene. And the three genes together 
gives it this beautiful, really saturated look. You can see the VPI Junglo has a little bit deeper colors in the call, kind of more reds than oranges. And then another thing that's cool is this animal has a lot of black scales, little black flecks, because remember the VPI doesn't completely stop production of the melanin pigment. So you get a little bit of black. And then what I really like about this animal is kind of the aberrant pattern it has from the jungle gene. You can see the striping and the abnormally shaped uh, saddles that are connected. I just love the geometric shapes that some of these saddles have. So this is one of the few morph boas that I would classify as a living work of art. It's just so cool. You know, I know that these types of animals don't appeal to everyone. Some people like more of the pure localities, but you know, I like them both ways. I like the morphs as well as the uh, pure localities. So really cool animal. This is a two, uh, almost two year old female. So she'll probably be ready to breed in another, another couple years. But I've just been really enjoying watching this animal grow. And she certainly has gotten better as she's gotten older. The last morph gene I'm working with is the Moran gene. And the Moran gene is an incomplete dominant form of pastel. So basically, if the animal has one copy of the Moran gene, it has a beautiful pastel phenotype. If an animal has two copies, you have a super Moran, which is a really cool deep red uh, uh, color with a reduced pattern. It's really a spectacular animal to behold. But this is a Moran jungle. And so I actually got into Moran because I saw some pictures of a VPI Moran and it was just this amazing looking animal, this beautiful glowing color. It almost looked incandescent like it was electric or something because the Moran really makes the colors pop. And you can see in this Moran jungle how beautiful her saddles are. The saddles just appear to glow. They really stand out from the Moran, call, from Moran gene. You can see the beautiful deep oranges and you know beautiful uh, shades of kind of a deep orangish brown. You can see this animal, because of the jungle gene, she's got some striping on her tail. There's, uh, the saddles are a little bit different to shape, but just a really beautiful animal. I think the jungle Moran is one of my favorite combos, and I think the jungle and the Moran gene really work well together. So this is a 2017 female, so she'll probably be ready to pair up uh, next year, maybe have some babies in 2022. But Moran is another gene that gets better with age. And this animal, her saturation of color has just gotten more and more intense as she's gotten bigger. I actually have a male of the same exact morph. This is a male Moran jungle. You can see this guy looks a little bit different. So in general, he's got kind of lighter, more orangey colors and kind of more of a classic jungle look to his saddles as well as uh, his overall look. So beautiful animal. You can see that just because two animals have the same two genes, as far as the morph genes, they can look a little bit different. And remember, boas have tens of thousands of genes that make a boa. And when we talk about a morph gene, we're just talking about a couple that change. But the other tens of thousands are also important to its overall appearance. And depending on what your, the genetic background of your particular animal is, uh, it really affects how exactly the morph is gonna look. It's why it's really important to try to get the best looking normal boas that you can if you want to breed some normal boa into your project to enhance all those other thousands and thousands of genes. So this animal is a 2018. He's a year younger than the female I just showed you. But overall, a really cool looking animal that shows how the jungle and the Moran can work so well together. So we've seen how well the jungle and the Moran go together. But if we throw in a third gene, we get this animal, a hypo jungle Moran. So this animal kind of takes the color and the saturation a little bit higher. You can see uh, how much oranges and different shades of, you know, beautiful light browns. And the animal also has a lot of like purpley lavender highlights to her. Really cool looking animal, you know, almost an indescribable color. And you can see how the colors around her tail are just almost dripping with saturation, the beautiful, lots of oranges and you know almost a pinkish orange with a lavender a little bit of lavender thrown in there if that makes sense but just kind of, you know kind of a really beautiful coloration so this particular animal 
I'm planning on breeding to my VPI male. And so the, both this animal and the VPI male are 2017 babies. They'll be ready to breed in 20, for the 2022 breeding season. And so what's gonna happen is I'll produce some animals, hopefully, that are VPI uh, hats that are Hypo, Jungle, and Moran. And then I can cross them and ultimately get some VPI Junglos and VPI uh, Hypos and Albinos and all kinds of really cool uh, combos with the VPI and the Moran. And as I mentioned, these VPI Moran animals almost look incandescent. They almost look like a light bulb that someone plugged in and they're just kind of glowing with color. Really cool look. And this brings us to my last morph boa. This is number 11 if you've been counting. And this is another Moran combo. This is a Hypo Moran. So looking at this animal, you can see how uh, bright the colors are. Lots of oranges and almost pinkish color. Um, but just a beautiful look. You know, you can see how it looks a little bit different than the Jungle Morans. You know, a little bit lighter overall with the characteristic bow tie shaped saddles due to the Hypo gene. This particular animal has the bonus of being 50% possible hat for call albino. And so my plans for this female are to breed to my call albino male. And if I'm lucky, I might get some Moran call albinos and some Moran call sunglows. And what's cool is that there is supposedly a marker for the call albino gene, which is the eye color and the appearance of the eyes. Supposedly, if the animal has kind of these light colored eyes with kind of a line where like part of the eye is a little bit lighter than the other. Supposedly that's a marker that it's a hype, a uh, hat for call albino and this animal appears to have that trait. So I'll just have to see. But if she's not hat for call, the offspring will be hat and I can breed them together to hopefully get the Moran call albinos and Moran call uh, sun glows. So there you have it. These are the morph boas I'm working with. There's a few additional genes that you know I'd like to get into. I probably won't though. I'm kind of maxed out on my morph boas at this point, and you know most of my energy is spent on my locality boas. But hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the offspring that I'll be producing over the next few years. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.